Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays and it's time for an update on the uh, space uh, blip on Factorio space exploration and the big headline from the last um, the last stream is that I've I've theoretically got Deep Space Science 4 working. I say theoretically because as you can see by the complete lack of anything at all on this belt it's not actually running at the moment but I have managed to make some um, I managed to make some of the uh, catalogues for it and if I look up here in the science area I've laid down everything that's needed up here in order to start actually making them. So all the all the belts and things are in place. We're just waiting for enough supply to be coming in. So if we have a look in here, we can see that we've got the significant data being brought up. We've got the Deep Space Science Pack 3s being brought around from just below. We've got the Advanced Neural Gel and we've got the coolant being brought in. And, all, and everything else is wired up here to dispose of it all and to make the science pack go off down, down the chute, down off to the science area. However, you'll also notice that we're missing the Naquium processors and the extended Deep Space Science catalogs. So those are all things, those are both things that are being made. Uh, they're just not being made in large enough numbers for it to have got up here yet. Back down here in the Deep Space Science area. I've been messing around quite a bit with the Arcospheres and there'll be a video talking about that coming out on Friday, assuming I, I have time to make it, which I think I should. I'm, I'm reasonably good about that sort of thing. But this area, I've now expanded this a little bit. We've got a gravimetrics facility over here that's producing the next one of the data cards for the next science pack. So have a look in here. We're trying to make uh, wormhole data, and that requires lots and lots of inputs. Um, most of these aren't too bad. Um, we've got various types of arcospheres, but my arcosphere balancing is set up, and I think it works. We also needed cryonite and data, and data cards, so those are being brought in from down here. So in order to try and... I wanted to keep this as close to all of this stuff as possible because it's using the arcospheres, and I don't want to have long, long belts with arcospheres on them being traipsed around the, on the, around the base because that's just a sort of a... It's, it's, it's a sort of another load on the, on the number of arcospheres I've got, and I've only got 150 or 200 of them at this point. Uh, so I want to keep them all in as confined a space as possible, and also all inside this RoboPort network, ideally in, inside this single RoboPort. So I tacked it on here, um, and that meant I had to bring in all of the inputs for it. Well, they, we had Cryonite for making these science packs, but I, so I brought that up around here. Data cards we've had to bring in, and again, round the bottom and up to here. And also coolant, because it turns out that whilst nearly every recipe takes in super chilled and gives out warm, um, this particular one brings in super chilled and, and outputs cool, just to be just to be awkward as far as I can tell. So I grumbled a little bit about that and then ran this pipe down here to take it away off to be off to be rechilled again. Um, this is always a little bit unhelpful when when you, you you find a one of them that does something a bit different because you need to run all the extra pipe work and you also need to make sure up at the other end that your cooling system has got the right types of we've got the right filter uh, pumps and that will turn cells on and off at the right time to make sure that you don't end up with too much of any of these things so we need to make sure there's always a bit of a buffer in this tank so that that warm thermo so cool thermofluid sorry can come out of that grav, grav facility and go back in here so it's, it's a little bit of a pain but it's manageable I can work around it so that's okay so that will in theory when it runs that will then create the wormhole data as expected. But the problem is we've, we've got a massive shortage of the Naquium cube. So these are being made really, really slowly. Everything, you'll see this is a running theme during this episode. Everything is now coming back to a shortage of Naquium, which isn't really a surprise because I was aware that I was pushing the supply of Naquium a bit too hard and we did, just wasn't making enough of it. So that's a thing for the next episode or mostly for the next episode. But yeah, they do occasionally come through and they'll dribble down here, go through here and eventually make their way through here along here and, and in. So this is another bit, another input that I had to sort of spaghetti in, and which is, it's all been a bit horrible. And then over here, getting the, uh, the da those data cards out was a bit difficult as well. So you'll see along here, we've got all this, these, this lovely thing here. This, this bit I set up when there was plenty of space. It was the original thing I set up here. So we're pulling out the four different types of data cards, but while still sending all the archospheres back to where they belong, they're going out onto here. But then the, these data cards, the wormhole data was just there wasn't room to put in another one of these. Now, maybe I should have had this a little bit further across and split them out so come down here or something like that. That would have been possible and that would have probably been fairly sensible. But instead, what I've done is I've spaghettied it in over here. There was a little bit of space that I could just squeeze in between these two inserters. So I've got an inserted AES splitter that pulls pulls out the um, wormhole data, puts it onto this belt that goes all the way over here and drops down there, uh, allowing the arcospheres to then wiggle around here. And this is, this is some rather severe spaghetti but it's working so um, you know if it ain't broke um, well yeah <laughs> it's only a bit broken so yes that's them bringing the data cards down here where they're um, 
been brought all the way down um, to... Which belt am I looking at? Not this Not this one. It's... It's the, this underground... But the, but the, 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 oh, it goes under here. It goes all the way over to here. Ah, yes, where we merge it on with the um, the deep space... Whatever this is called. Deep space transport data or something. From, from the, that we're getting from the jellyfish spaceship. So that's coming down here. Down, 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 down. Fed across into a supercomputer. Great. That's two of the that's two of the data packs, data card types. That's that's working as you can see. We are we are making, and that's why I was saying we are making this, these um, these these catalogs, albeit rather slowly. So there are two other types as well as you as you'd expect, given uh, given that every single science type takes four da data cards in. The next one we have here is this. This is making teleportation data. Now this one was tricky because it requires the singularity and time space anomaly data, which you need to bring down from all the way up. <laughs> up here where they're being used for deep space science too so uh, for conveniently the way i happened to have set this up they were on the same belt so i've just got a splitter in here that will pull them off to go off that way send them down to be uh, to be re reused and then the remaining ones come over here to be made into the deep space science packs too now we don't have enough of these so we do need to find a way of making these a bit more quickly but i think once again that is due to, yes, the, this is a shortage of the Naquium cubes that are being used for this step. So, again, it's a shortage of Naquium. The Naquium cube machines up here are... Oh, actually, they're running... They're not running flat out. They're, they're all running sometimes. But I'm going to need a lot more Naquium to be coming in. A lot more Naquium plates to be coming in here in order to make them. And I think, whilst right now, yes, we do have a bit of Naquium available. But as you can see, it has run out. So we, this, this is sort of the... the the flow, but it's going to ebb again fairly quickly. Uh, we're going to and we're going to run out of all this naquium is going to get turned into plates, and then these machines will use it all up, and then it'll stop again. So naquium definitely a problem. But those come down here, they get lasered to bits with even more naquium cubes. You see, it's even another thing using them there, um, and some cryo, just, just, just the usual stuff. And we're spitting then spitting those out with this inserter, putting them onto here, where they're coming down here, being merged with the output from here. And this one uses Naquium processors, which we seem to have a decent supply of at the moment. But the nice thing is, for every one of those Naquium processors that gets used, it produces 50 reality hypergraph analysis data. So with, whilst use, these things are incredibly expensive, the fact that it then makes 50 science packs from it isn't too bad. It's a bit like the um, the train crashing data for material science, where you um, you produce 1,500 scrap and you use a train, but it produces about 50 or 100 of the data cards. So it doesn't feel too bad. It's still a bit ridiculous, but it's not too bad. Those, of course, get fed onto the belt down here, into here, and we and we science them all up. Now you'll notice we've needed a new type of supercomputer for these two recipes. These are deep supercomputers, which are basically tier four supercomputers. And those require quite a lot of expensive stuff, so we're making them up here, where we have a supply of the uh, Naquium processors, so, and then I can bring over the tier 3 supercomputers all the way from the other side of the world um, in order to make them over here. And I decided this was better, because over here we already have... Um, Yes, we already have a supply of the um, of the advanced neural gel because we needed that for making the making the processes up here, which requires arcospheres, so absolutely has to be here. So we've already brought that in by train. So we've got the neural gel here. Um, we've got the processes here. The only thing we're lacking is the other type of supercomputer. So I can nip over to the other side, carry them over, and, and just make them here because I don't tend to need. I'm not expecting to need enormous quantities of these. Um, yes, I mean it might be nice to do some upgrades around the rest of the base, but it's only going to be sort of. It's only going to be tens of them at most. We're not going to be making. We're not going to be trying to make a constant stream of them like we are with the science packs. So I feel that doing this over here and, and carrying the stuff over manually isn't too bad. Now, of course, it's even even more even harder because in order to make the um, the supercomputer Mark Threes, which are here, um, these require the what I've been calling Riddler data because it's green and has a question mark on it, and I'm a massive nerd, um, as well as random other stuff as well. So. In order to actually get, get the, in order to get these supercomputers, I need to bring the one of the biological data's over from somewhere over here. I forget exactly. Um, no, not that one. That's a wrong shaped question mark. Um, is it here? Yes. I need to grab the Riddler data from here and take it over to the other side. Now, look, looking a bit more closely at it, it's probably not actually. It's, it's not actually a question mark. And it has some zappy things off the top. But you know, I've started calling that calling it that, so that's fine. Now, it has just occurred to me that I've got over here. I have everything, wherever it is, over here, I have everything that's needed 
um, except for the uh, Naquin processors. And over on the other side, I have everything that's needed except for these supercomputers. So I could just as I could actually bring the Naquin processors over to here to build them, rather than taking these computers over there. It's it's kind of much of a muchness. I don't think it really matters which way round I do it, and I've sort of decided on the the other way. So that's what we're doing. Um, having them over here would have been slight, perhaps nicer because it would have kept all of the um, all of the supercomputer construction together. We've got one, two, three, and then maybe I could have put four down here. Uh, but yeah, it, I, I don't I don't think it actually matters which way round I do those because it, it's such a small quantity of things that I think it's absolutely fine. So, so in order to do this, actually turn these catalogues into the science packs, I need, again, the Naquim processors. And these are being made up here. It's, it's a bit slow because these require Naquim tesseracts, which require Naquim cubes, which is why this whole thing is ground to a halt. It's, again, as I keep saying, it's the Naquim that's causing me problems. So, but then when we make the processors, they can also, they go on to, um... Let's see, so, <laughs> so they come down here, go along here, oh yeah, with the Naquim tesseracts. Um, the test racks get split out here. The cubes, get, the the processors come down here to be used for the science pack down here. But I think they yes, they're also split off here, where they're passed over to another station. So this station will gradually fill up, and these things are quite big. So this this one, this one is already full. Seven 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 three. So we're 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 more than half full over here, and then a train can come, and we can actually start making the science packs. But again, over here, we've got 168 of them. In total, we've got 184. We need that to get to about 2,000 before we'll actually be ready to start making the... Um, before a train will turn up automatically and we'll start making the science packs. So, it's going to be a while, but this is why I said it's theoretically working. We haven't actually made anything practical yet. Um, speaking of all of the stuff that's going into the Deep Space Science 4, I took this ship out for a test flight as well. We flew it all the way to Realm of Shadows and back, because that seemed like a reasonably sensible test route. And uh, everyone in chat was saying, oh yeah, you're going to have absolutely loads of, um, of um, what's this, uh, antimatter. You don't need to worry about that at all. You're going to run out of heat first from, the, from your energy beam receiver. And they were quite right, it turns out. Um, when we got to uh, Realm of Shadows, and I was keeping an eye on it on the way out to make sure it wasn't going to run out of heat, we'd use something like 1500 degrees C from here, um, out of the 5000 that's available, and about 2 or two, 2 or 3k from each of these booster tanks. So we'd ended up using um, about more than a third of the available heat in the, in, the, um, in the energy beam receiver, because you can't take it below 5000, or it'll stop, because these only work at 5000 degrees upwards. And we'd used, like, less than 5%, maybe maybe about 5% of the antimatter in all of these tanks. Um, so we then flew back again, I'd used, at that point I'd used probably 60% of the available, uh, or 70% of the available heat, and maybe 10% of the available antimatter. So, yeah, we could, we could potentially do a much longer flight if we had a lot more heat available, but we don't. And the ship was getting up to speeds of, I think, I want to say 160, let's see if it'll tell me. No, I don't see a maximum speed in here. But I think I, I think it was 160. If this is wrong, I'll, I'll put a correction up on screen. And that meant this was running nice and quickly, and we produced quite a lot of the um, of the interstellar travel data, which has then been dumped onto the onto here and has gone back out of here and gone, gone down the chute here. So we've got enough to fill this belt up all the way along here, all the way down here and into here, and to have made a load of the data, the data over there. So this is going. This is going well. I think I need to send this out. I need to automate this ship. So that's the thing on my list. This is currently. I flew it out there manually. It flew back manually, and then it unloaded. However many of those we've made. In fact, let's have a quick look. Okay. So in that run out there, we were making um, three. Th we were making 36 and a half per minute at the peak, and it was out there, and it was running for about a good half an hour or so at more or less that sort of level. That dip in there is probably when it arrived at Realm of Shadows and slowed down, and then we had to turn it around again. Um, so including these blips, we've made 1,200 1, of them. So that's probably that's probably about 1,000, and that's probably the other 200 between those two little blips. And these are these are previous tests um, before, to see how it was going. So yeah, 12, 12, 1,000 of these on each run is a pretty good number. Um, it just means I'll uh, yeah I'll, I'll essentially what I'll do is I'll set it so that when there's no um, when there's no data cards here. Uh, I'll wire it up through here, then it can launch. It'll fly out to Realm of Shadows, dock there, immediately turn around and fly back again. Uh, and then it'll dock here, and it can, and then it can unload them all. So this, this is this is pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I think it should should work quite happily on its own. Um, we just need to make sure, yeah. Oh, well, we can make sure this is topped up. This is topped up. The only 
slight problem is whether this can get back up to temperature before it leaves again because this is this is the limiting factor on how far it can fly so we don't want to leave until this has got right back up to full temperature so the question is in the, what what happens quicker this reheating or this unloading and i guess we'll have to we'll have to sort of we'll have to what i would describe as for science that which means basically means give it a shot see what happens um so yeah just keep an eye on it see which one see which which of all of the things that get it ready to launch happens last because you can't actually read an energy beam receiver to find out how hot it is which is a, a real shame because if you could just plug a, a a thermal probe into that and put it onto the circuit network that'd be really useful and we could say yeah don't launch until this has got up to full temperature but you can't do that so we're not going to so we're not going to be able to do that we're just going to have to keep an eye on it and check that all of the other fill ups and empties take longer than this than this one does um, which is going to be interesting, um, especially there, as there isn't room on here to dump out another thousand data cards. So maybe we'll wait until this is run, almost run out and then, and then give that a shot. So in order to get this to heat up, well, originally I used the um, the same beam that I used to heat up this ship. The one, this is the one that goes out to Realm of Shadows to pick to carry all the Naquium around, um, and that was okay for testing purposes. But if I'm going to be starting, if I'm going to be trying to automate both of them, then I can't be watching them and fiddling with them all the time to make sure everything is going nicely. So that means this one essentially needs its own beam uh, coming over here. So I went back out to Kalidas Orbit and I set up another one. So this is the one that's currently cooking the... Um, which one are you cooking? Yeah, this is the one that's cooking the ship that goes out to um, Realm of Shadows. And this one is cooking the, uh, the jellyfish at the moment. Now this could be expanded to be quite a bit bigger. We actually currently have... Um, about nine gigawatts available so I could have another nine injectors on here but like a Muppet I went out without enough of it, without any extra energy beam chambers so I wasn't able to extend this one any further than the six that I put on it but that's enough for now however yes I'm now producing 50 gigawatts here and that's pot may be made possible because I've drastically increased the amount of solar I've got here now I brought out um, I didn't bring out quite enough solar panels but that's fine but I brought out enough for what I was trying to do but there's a bit more expansion available here that I'll come out and, and just do next time I need more power so it's planned but it's not 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 implemented and not needed yet so all the rest of them yeah they're powering all the other different um, outposts around around the place uh, this one's probably for tulip yes this one is indeed tulip that's tulip is using a lot of power because we're gen this is where we're um, producing all of the uh, the Naquium, and that's just a massive processing facility that I've been trying to get going faster and faster and faster. And so, as, yes, as I was saying in the um, a, a little bit earlier, the big problem at the moment is that I'm not pulling enough, bringing enough Naquium through to keep everything running. So I've started making efforts to fix that. The first one of those efforts is uh, that I now have three ships doing the run back and forth across here. So we've got the um, let's see if we can find them. Is the one there? I don't think so. No, there's no ship parked here at the moment. But there's the number two, there's the num number two here, the number three there, and then presumably the number one is docked on in um, in in, on, in Norvis orbit and unloading or reloading or something like that. So we've now got three of these ships buzzing around back and forth, and I think I should have in I should be able to fit a fourth one in. I reckon. So there'll be one. So we'll always have one loading, one unloading, uh, and two in one in and then one in transit each way. So I think there's enough capacity for to do that. However. In order to do that, I think I'm going to need a bit more crushed, this crushed Naquium flowing through. Um, at the moment, as you can see, well, we've got... Um, this one is half full. These two are not. I don't know why there's... Um, I don't know why they're unbalanced. That's a little bit of a concern. Oh, I suspect I do, actually. They probably got full while one was unloading the uh, sulphur, and then it's just got backed up and funny things have happened. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we need uh, more sulphur to be... more more na crushed Naquatite to be flowing down here. So my plan for that is to double the amount of crushing that's going on here. Because if we look at these bells feeding the bring the, the uh, Naquium in, they're all running pretty slowly. So I reckon the best thing to do here is just chuck in another set of these machines. Now, I could put in um, speed modules in them, but I believe you're more, it's more efficient to put in more machines rather than use speed modules because putting in speed modules uses a lot more power than it gains you in speed so if you find something that's got a, the way you say you've doubled the speed you'll probably find you've quadrupled the amount of power used or something like that now there is a flip side to that if you're doing um, if you're using productivity modules in these things then beaconing them in, with speed modules is worthwhile because making those productivity modules is incredibly expensive but because these are in deep space I can't put in productivity modules in here 
so there's no point in using speed modules i might as well just build more crushers yes it's a small investment in um, in materials to make the machines but it means it uses a lot less power and since power is com comes out here in a slightly funny way where we boil water in the spaceship and then store store the steam in these tanks and then gradually generate the power from it i'd rather not push that too far um so we'll just we'll, st we'll stick with that as it is and i think think it should be okay my biggest concern is whether we'll have enough trains bringing the uh, the Naquium around here. I think I'm going to need to build some extra trains and extend the uh, the depot up here, uh, which is why I built the stacker here, so we can have lots and lots of trains pile up in the stacker. I also need to fix this, because when a train comes in with Naquium from the mine over here, it ends up coming along here, going down here, round here, up here, round here, and then into the stacker, which is a nonsense. I need... Basically, I just need a, um, a thing coming out, which, to which, yeah, onto onto this. Basically, I just need this, and then it'll be less stupid. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that next time I'm out here, so the trains can come in from either direction. Um, but basically, I think this isn't going this isn't going to be a problem. Uh, we need to make sure the limits train limits here. Well, it's not it's not set. We need to make sure the train limit here is set to oh set to four. Okay, so that should be all right. We just need to bump the numbers, play with the numbers here, and that'll that'll be fine. So that'll bring in lots and lots of naquium, and hopefully we'll. And then I've been working on produce, designing a faster naquium processing facility. So we have a look on Tulip. The limiting factors. The, the the problem here is that we're bringing in the naquium, but then it's only being unloaded relatively slowly actually this chest this warehouse is filling up at the moment so it's coming it's being unloaded fairly quickly but it's only being processed fairly slowly that needs to be dealt with i need to significantly improve the speed of this so in the last stream i messed around for a little while with a design um and got uh, i i had a sort of thing kind of working but not really so i've now since then i've, I've improved things a bit but we'll, i'll be revealing that in the next stream so come along to the stream on wednesday and i'll show you uh, i'll show you me getting all of that up and working but it should quadruple the amount of naquium i'm producing and then no doubt that'll show me other places where i've got massive problems as well so we'll see how that goes another potential limiting factor with the um transporting of the um the, the naquium around is how quickly we can load the sulfur into this spaceship up here so when this ship land when the ship arrives it does a number of things it unloads all of the crushed naquitite like this, as you can see. It goes, it unloads it from here into these warehouses and then goes into these ships that will take it off to be processed. But also, it loads up sulfur and iron in order to make the um, sulfuric acid that you need for naquium processing. And loading in the sulfur can take quite a long time. So if there's enough room to unload here, the, the, the slowest part by a significant margin is, un, is loading up all this extra sulfur because we've only got one belt of it coming in and this belt previously historically was running a bit slowly because we, we were only loading it with two stack inserters so that was running at about 50 percent capacity so in order to improve that i've put in another station down here it's a copy of this one um, and this one also requests sulfur so we can now have another two insult ins inserters loading the belts we've got basically almost twice as much coming through here it's it's good it's an improvement but i'm worried that in the future it's still going to be the bottleneck so we're going to have to see if i can speed up how quickly this loads and unloads in the future it did at the moment as you can see another ship hasn't arrived so at the moment things seem to be basically okay but i'm concerned this is this is sort of a, just just a band-aid and we're still going to have trouble later on we'll see how that goes though I had a few problems with meteor strikes in the last episode, as well, or the last stream as well. So, Kalidus orbit was a little bit, a little bit vulnerable. It took a little bit of damage, which I have since repaired because I went there. Um, it turns out that, well, basically the problem is that down here we've got a meteorite defense system that's loaded from a chest, which and that chest is loaded by me going out there and emptying my, with with a massive pile of the meteor defense ammo and dumping it in there because we don't have the infrastructure to build it here. So. Perhaps I need to improve the infrastructure so we can. Perhaps I need, uh, but there's there's not a lot in the way of resources around here. We've got, we've got iron ore here. We've got plenty of iron. We've got stone, and that seems to be basically it. So we need to bring in copper, oil. What goes into one of those things? So we need for this one we need copper and either wood or stone. We've got so we've got stone. So we bring in copper for that. Uh, we need. Iron, which we've got, copper, which we'll be bringing in, but sulfuric acid, and this is difficult because this requires iron, sulfur, and water, none of which we have here, probably. Um, so, and I don't think, um, unless maybe you can ship sulfuric acid by um, delivery cannon, that would be possible. Or maybe I just have a spaceship that flies out here and unloads 
unloads um, this ammunition. I mean, that would, wouldn't be impossible. It'd be a little bit of a silly, slightly wasteful spaceship, but I mean, I, I could. Maybe I should do that. Um, have it round robin all of the various different places that require um, uh, this, this ammunition, but aren't, aren't being supplied with it. Because I also noticed that Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1 had had a similar problem. Uh, this one I haven't fixed yet. A meteor landed here, broke well, lots and lots of belts around here, basically. Uh, so I need to come out here, do some repairing. At least, it's, at least it's only hit cheap stuff. So I don't really care too much about that, except that it's it stopped the um, the, the sulfur plot being passed through for the sulfuric acid production for the uranium production, which is annoying. Um, so this, yeah, this is potentially a, a bit of an issue. Easy to fix, but yeah, this this one there haven't been many um, meteor strikes out here, so I hadn't bothered building up defences for it. Uh, but again. Perhaps I should, uh, just, you know, for completeness sake. The other funny one was on Trellos, where um, over here, yeah, we had another, had a meteor strike here. But this is even more interesting. If, if you actually look back at the VOD from the stream, um, there was a biter nest here. So I believe what happened was we had, because this is technically Trellos, uh, surprisingly, is actually a vitamelange planet. Um, I wasn't expecting that um, because... Mostly I came here for the oil. Well, I, I basically came here for, for the oil. But there's all, because there's also a bit of vitamelange, when you get meteors, sometimes they bring biters with them. So we had a meteor landed here and a, and a biter nest appeared. Yes, fortunately, it was just in the range of the laser defences. Because if it had landed here, we'd have had or any, almost anywhere, anywhere inside this, this area, we'd have had biters wandering around the base just chewing on things and destroying goodness knows how much infrastructure around here. Um... And that would have been extremely frustrating because I wouldn't have been able to do anything about it except go out there and fix it by hand. So maybe I should be putting a few more lasers around. This planet is defended by, by meteor defences, but there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only eight of them. And that apparently isn't enough for the number of um, meteors that can come in. So perhaps I need to extend this belt up here and put more and more and more meteor guns in. This is one of those that is actually supplied by spaceships. So the space when the um, when the core mining spaceship lands on Norvis, it will pick up a load of um, meteor defense ammunition from there. Then when it lands here, it'll unload them all into this chest where they can then be put out here. So this one is fully automated. There just aren't enough guns, so I need more guns here basically. <laughs> but yeah, that's a I can I can I can I can do that I suppose. The other problem that's happened out here is that we seem to have got too much oil. Um, so I've got an alert system somewhere, somewhere here. Yes, here it is. That's connected to. Um, oh, here it is. It's, yes, it's connected to these. Um, yeah, connected to the oil tank. So when these fill up, it'll sound. It'll alert me down here and tell me there's a problem. And the problem is that in fact, that's interesting. That alert shouldn't be. Why is this? This this is this this has died for some reason. That's odd. So these are full of oil, which means the um, this has stopped running. Uh, one moment, I'm just going to make it daylight. Okay, slightly cheating, but I don't care because this is just a, a summary video. Okay, so because these are filled up completely, that means these crushers have stopped going. So we're stopping. That means the um, we're no longer feeding the supplies through down here. So that's probably why this train is sat here. We've yeah, there's no no stone going into these two. So yeah, so the the system has ground to a halt. But the weird thing is that these tanks aren't full, so there should be plenty of capacity for dealing with the oil. Um, So, you are not running... Oh! I know why. Yes, it's because, yeah, that biter landing has broken the water pipe that brings water up from down here. And so we're not able to, um, not able to, 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 uh, to, to process the oil anymore. So, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. Now that I know what the problem is, I'm happy because I can come along and fix this. But, uh, it was a bit, it was a bit odd before. Finally, the last thing that I want to talk about is that one of my ships got stuck, which is a bit stupid but happens every so often due to fail basically i thought it the trellos chunks because that seems to be yes so as you can see this is just sort of oh it's, it's actually made it to somewhere useful right i told it to go to greenleaf orbit which is going to take it about an hour to get there but the reason it's had a problem is because it's run out of um, ion stream so it was only able to go travel at limp speed which is very very slow but enough to get it to somewhere like this so we can dock this in um, in Greenleaf orbit, and that means I can then set, bring another ship along and then pipe some ion stream directly from the ship into here. If it was way off in deep space or just somewhere that where it would take too long to get to anywhere useful, then I could always bring a ship over with. Uh, I could fly out there in a ship and then carry over a um, 
is it a, I think it might be a particle accelerator that you use to unload the um, the ion stream little tank things. So I'll be able to then fly out, build an extension on the side here, pump some ion stream into it, demolish all of that, then send the ship on its way. So you can recover ships without having to uh, limp them to another planet. But it's it's easier if you can limp them somewhere. So I've done that. I've brought it to Greenleaf. We'll park in Greenleaf orbit, head over there with one of my other ships and, and, and refill it. That's not going to be too difficult. Um, but yeah, that felt a bit silly. So in an attempt to try and fix that and prevent it from happening again, over in Norvis orbit, in the fueling area for all these ships, um, I decided there were two possible things I could do. One would be to go into these, all of the all of these chunk ship, uh, core chunk transport ships and put in an extra thing here that monitors for how much um, ion stream it's got and doesn't leave until it's got enough. But it, I decided it would be a lot easier just to put in a buffer tank here that then we could keep with this. This will hopefully be kept full, and we can then, with then we've got enough to just dump dump a full tank straight into here. So this this should now fill up much more quickly, much more easily, even if multiple ships come through. Because if we've got a lot of ships coming through, then it's going to be the rocket fuel. It's going to be the, um, the, the the thing that keeps that slows it down. So yeah, this will gradually fill up. The problem is we've, the problem is I'm trying to fill up all of my spaceships that do that transport stuff around from this one pipe that goes around here from this spaceship around here and up here, um, and if they come in reasonably gradually, we're sort of one at a, one at a time with a bit of a gap between them, that's fine because I can it can refill these tanks around here. We can put, dump the fuel straight across into the spaceship and it can leave fairly quickly. But when there's high demand, then we start to have problems. So I think maybe maybe I should do something about this. Maybe I should run another pump off the tank at the top and bring it up here and across here and feed it in up up here where it can pump into these tanks and then dribble down to these as they fill up. And it'll just generally it'll double the available double the speed that the fuel goes through. So I think that'd probably be a good idea. And I should probably do that next time. So next time will be Wednesday, so please come along then to watch the stream, starting at 7.30 UK time as always. Also going to be streaming Minecraft uh, Dungeons and Dragons and Space Shuttles on uh, Monday. I've been, last week I went through and did a load of um, load of building up, following quest lines and getting getting new stuff. And so next week I think, or this week, uh, tomorrow in fact, I should probably be going through and doing a bit of work on, trying to, trying to automate a bit of that to make it a bit less manual, a bit less painful to, to produce all of the, all the bits and pieces that are needed. The summary videos, of course, come out at the weekend, uh, for Saturdays and Sundays. You're uh, watching one of those at the moment. And I'm doing uh, Factorio tutorials at, on um, on Fridays at the moment and releasing quite a few of those. They seem to be uh, going pretty well. Everyone seems to like them, so um, happy with that. That's going well. And then after that, what, what else is there? There's GTA videos on Thursday, so those those are worth worthwhile. I think the one that came, the one that's coming out this week is actually going to be a really really good one, assuming I managed to finish in time, which I think I should. So yeah, I can strongly recommend that one. Um, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in everything else that's going on on the channel.